Hi, Jeff Bridgman here. I am going to talk to you uh, tonight about barber poles. You might call this the tale of three barber poles, two of which I'm really excited to show you, and one I uh, kind of prep you for the whole situation. So, what makes a good barber pole? Well, you have to back the truck up a little bit to understand what makes good full cart. In American full cart, you have form, age, color, and surface. That's really your big four things. I mean, if you have some specific history in addition to that, oh, that's great. Absolutely. Where is it from? Does that matter? Sure. But, you know, form, color, surface, age, um, that's what you really want. So, barber poles typically are what red white and blue today most of them not all of them uh and uh early ones well they can be a number of things they can be red and white in europe poles were typically red and white uh blood and bandages is the story and in america they could be red and white they could be uh, black and white they could re be red white and blue and you know a lot of stories sort of accompany these things but the first thing I want you to see is surface so we have this pole that's probably you know 1880s at the very earliest or 90s more likely 1910 1920 mm, uh, maybe even 30s on this piece could be so it's this is a nice good sized pole I mean it's uh bigger than four feet I'm uh just under six feet so you know pretty decent sized barber pole here the turnings are really nice the paint is polychromatic uh but it's kind of splotchy and I mean it's I don't want to down talk it too much. I did buy it um, a million years ago by a guy that from a guy that walked into the piers in New York and sold it to me when those shows still existed. And gosh, I've never taken it anywhere, really. I don't think maybe maybe once. But here it makes for a nice uh, thing to show you uh, that this is a good barber pole. It is not a great over-the-top barber pole. It's got a nice form. It's got okay color. Surface, meh, not 100%. But then again, you know, everybody can't be the king, right? Now, here's something else. And a very different animal. So I said that American barber poles... They can be black and white, right? Well, the story told by a lot of uh, uh, dealers and collectors uh, uh, that I've met over the last 33 years of doing uh, uh, the antiques business, 32 years doing antique shows, 1,700 shows, met a lot of people. Black and white was always told to me to be a mortuary pole because uh, a mortician would and the barber were often the same person. So, you know, communities were small. People had to wear a lot of hats. And it kind of made sense that a barber might dress the, the dead as well as the living, right? Well, when I really went to sat, sit down and research that, because I, I had at least one black and white barber pole, but I, suddenly I had two. And I said, well... I, I need to go back and tell the story and and tell people this is a barber and, and a mortician. No, not necessarily at all. I can find absolutely no references whatsoever to black and white striped barber poles being used by morticians or by barbers who also... Uh, marketed themselves as morticians. So it doesn't mean one thing, two things. It is just another version of the barber pole. That's all. Nothing more to the story. Um, now, 
sometimes the barber was a mortician, but black and white pole, not a mortician's pole. So in terms of being good, bad, or indifferent, why is this one great? Well, look at the form. It is tapered and square as opposed to round, really unusual. Yet at the top, look at this fabulous acorn, gilded and just great. Huge, this is a seven foot barber pole, looks even bigger next to me in the, in the video, looks monstrous. And it was made to go, it's hollow, it's four planks, and then, a, and then a solid turning up here. And it was made to go right on top of a, ah, there we go, right on top of a square tapered post. And by, by this method, you can just carry it right outside and, and put it up, and it, was, and it was very stable and simple. I had this base made to mimic that measured the interior, had the base made. And I want to show you the surface on this guy. I wouldn't call this surface a, a 10 or an 11 on a scale of 1 to 10, but it's an 8 or 9. I mean, it's really, really nice. You can see the crazing. Um, I did have to do a little bit of paint repair on this here and there. It turned out wonderfully. But you have to remember with a barber pole like this, this scale, it was outside in the weather. I mean, it's not going to be perfect at this height. You know, this size and this early, this is 1880s, 1885 to 1900, somewhere in there. It is... Uh, not square nailed it's round nailed but it's early round nails so 1880s to 1900 at the latest and the form and surface are so good that really this is a tremendous piece of american pole cart um tremendous barber pole and it ranks right up there with the best that, you, that you'll see if you're a barber pole collector what a great form to add uh, to your collection. Uh, that's a tremendous one. So you have the traditional helix uh, going up, but it takes hard angles. And that contrasting with the, with the acorn, it's just tremendous. Now, earlier and equally wonderful, but theoretically better, right? Because it's earlier, theoretically. Theoretical, you know, doesn't always play through in folk art, but I think it sort of does here. This barber pole is 1840, 50, 60 in New England. Has its original metal bracket, original iron bracket. It's probably nailed uh, originally with square nails, and at some point, these little guys were, um, these are round headed screws were added but if you look close i don't know if you can see in the picture the this bracket has been on there since the beginning it slid just a little bit so you can see where it was originally this is a three foot pole and i love the double taper and it goes into this uh uh, uh wonderful swell vase turning uh, with uh, uh, acorns at the top and bottom, but as you can see, that th they're stylized acorns, unlike this guy, which pretty much does look like an acorn. These are long and skinny, and the surface on here is tremendous. This came out of New England. I don't know how well you can see the surface here. It does show up really good in the photos, but throughout, this has... Um, no repairs. I didn't do anything to it. It's got a great knot right there that I happen to like. And, um, and look at the surface here. Tremendous, tremendous mid-19th century American barber pole. 
and it's and it's lightweight so it doesn't take much to hold it to the wall anyway and you can just go right up to wherever you want to hang it and, and voila with a single screw um, very stable so barber pole i think is great to add to just about any collection because um, they're they're three-dimensional they're graphic they really add another something to the room i love the fact that they're vertical you can uh, use that in a lot of situations little wall uh, between two doorways between two pieces of art um, there's many reasons to use one and and why red white and blue i'll leave that to the last because of the american flag honestly that's another story that gets blown out of proportion where oh well red and blue and white meant a surgeon because uh, blue is veins and red is arteries no that's another tall tale of the antiques world the red and white uh, european poles became american with the addition of blue which would have been appropriate over there too although i can't seem to really find any copies of a barber pole outside the united states i couldn't find one single good image of a barber pole from germany france or anywhere else so it's really sort of an american thing and the evolvement from probably some of the earlier poles to our later ones having blue it's actually a, a natural patriotic extension of uh, of a barber pole so i hope you had a wonderful time tonight and learned a little bit about barber poles and uh come and see me again soon